Hey everyone, and how's it going? So recently I made this loopable animation in Blender and it looks quite cool. So I'm gonna show you guys the basics of this today. I'm not gonna be doing the lighting and materials. So what you see here is what we're gonna be doing, just a basic scene with the animation. And I will be making my original one that you just saw the, with the lighting and the materials available on my Patreon. And if you guys haven't checked on my Patreon, I make some really cool stuff there, like this adorable little 2D character animation stuff. And I add a lot of my blend files there. And I also put, um, this guy on here recently, which is this abstract scene, which is really awesome. So there's a really cool stuff on my Patreon. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, there will be a link to that in the description below. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. When you see an open up in Blender, go ahead, hit A to select everything, and then X and delete. Go to your front orthographic view, go Shift A, add in a circle, tab into edit mode, RX90 with all of these vertices selected, and hit enter. So you've rotated 90 degrees. Then we're gonna go E, S, and we're gonna extrude it and scale it out to about here. Go to the right of graphic view, hit all of A to select all of the vertices, E, Y, and we're extruding it out this way a little bit. Just so we have something like this. Then we're gonna select this loop at the top here in the middle, X and delete these vertices. Select these vertices over here and hit F to fill in the faces. Then select these vertices over here and hit F to fill in the faces. Go to the modifiers tab, add in a subdivision surface. And then what we're gonna do is come over here, go control R, Add in a loop cut, double click, and then double G to slide. Do the same thing here, control R, double click, and then double G to slide. Go to object and enable shades move. So here we have this guy over here. And let's go back into our front view. We're gonna go shift A, go to our mesh options, add in a cylinder. And then we're gonna scale this guy down quite a lot like this. And then we're gonna go G, Z, and bring it down to here. Go to your right orthographic view, then grab this loop hoop, go G, Y, and just move it forward to here. So it's in the middle. Grab this guy again, and this is just gonna be the pole that comes down. So tap it to edit mode, select these bottom vertices and go G, Z, and just bring them down quite a bit like that. Go to object and enable shades move. And you can also come here and give that guy an edge split modifier. So here we have our, our, our hoop. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A in our front orthographic view. We're gonna add in a cylinder. And we're going to go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. Then we're going to go S to scale the sky down just a little bit. Control A and apply the scale. Then tap into edit mode and with all of these vertices selected, go S, Y, 1.5. We're just scaling it along the Y, 1.5. Just like this. Tap out of edit mode, go add a, um, a bevel modifier to this. Make the limit method angle. And then decrease the offset size over here. And then bump the segments up to 2 or 3. Go to object and enable shades move. Then what we want to do is add in another cylinder. So I'm going to go shift A, add in a cylinder. This time we're going to go G, Z and bring this guy up a bit and then S to scale it down. And we just want to bring it to this point here which is sitting on top of the cylinder. And this is going to be like the, the cable that's attaching this guy to the ceiling. We want to tap into edit mode, grab these top set of vertices. And um, okay, so what we actually want to do is just tap out of edit mode, I forgot. So we want to grab this guy and we want to go G, Z, and holding in control, we want to move it up. And we want it to snap on the grid to this point up here. So you can see one grid space, two grid spaces, three, four, and five. So on the fifth grid space up here, that's where we want to put it. And the reason we're doing it, so we have that little orange um, origin point at the top. So that's where it's going to be pivoting around. Then we select these bottom vertices and then we go G, Z, and we bring them down till they touch that cylinder. Just like that. So now if we were to hit R and rotate it, it's gonna rotate on that origin point, which is just gonna make animating this a lot easier for us. And then we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in an empty. And we're gonna make it a cube. And we're gonna go G, Z, bring this guy up to here, and then S to scale it down. And we're just gonna put it at the bottom of this guy over here. Just right there. And we're gonna go Control A and apply the scale. And then we wanna do is we want to grab this cylinder and holding in shift we want to select this empty then we want to go control p and we want to set parent to object and we want to keep the transform so now if we grab this empty and we rotate it we can see that the cylinder is attached to it now with this empty selected we're going to hold in shift select this um, bar over here and we're going to go control p and we're going to go object keep transform so now this guy is the the highest part in our hierarchy so this is um, cylinder is parented to the empty, the empty is parented to this. So grab this bar here, go to object, enable shades move, and give it an edge split modifier, just like that. So, 
that's going to work pretty good. And now all we have to do is add in our scene as well. So we're going to go Shift A, go to our mesh options here, add in a plane, G, Z, just bring it down to about here. And then we're going to go S, just to scale it up like this. Tap into edit mode, and we're going to go E, Z, and extrude this up like this. Then we're going to go X and delete that face. Then we're going to come to grab this vertice over here and go X and delete the vertice. So this is what we're going to have here, is this room. And you can always come and scale it down a bit if you have to. Make it whatever size you want, but I'm going to go to here. I'm going to bring my viewport here and I'm going to add a camera. So I'm going to go Shift A, I'm going to add in a camera. With the camera selected, I'm going to hit zero to go into camera view, then G and my middle mouse wheel, and I'm just pulling back, I'm hitting the middle mouse button after I've pressed G. So I'm going to get a view like this, go to my camera settings. I'm going to make the type an orthographic camera. I'm going to go to my output settings and I'm going to make the Y value on the resolution 1920. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to give me a square aspect ratio. Now I'm going to hit double tap R with my camera selected and holding in shift, I'm just going to move my camera around and rotate it. And I'm also going to hit G to move it. And just using these two um, options on the keyboard, I'm just moving my camera into position like this. Now you guys don't have to mirror this exactly, but this is just an angle I'm going with and a camera setup. So it's just something like this. You can always come and adjust it later. Totally up to you guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. And I'm gonna come in here and do a bit of really simple and basic animation in my scene. So first of all, let's just come to our end frames here. I'm gonna make the end value here 80 and I'm gonna hit enter. And then what we're gonna do is come over here, just drag this up to give us a bit more space to work. And let's make sure we're on frame one. So if this um, slider here is anywhere else, make sure it's on frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna select this pole over here that's in our top hierarchy. When you come to our right orthographic view, so just hit free on your number pad, that's gonna take you to the right orthographic view. Hit N to open up your properties panel. Um, and you can go to items. And under the transform settings, we're gonna go down to the rotation. And we're gonna be rotating the X location here. So let's type in 30, so free zero and hit enter. And then hovering over this on frame one, we're gonna hit I. That's gonna insert a keyframe for this 30 degree slope on the X. And then what we're gonna do is come over here to frame 40. And on frame 40, we're gonna come here and make this negative three zero. So type in minus three zero and hit enter. And we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe. And that is on frame 40. And then we're gonna come here, click on here on the timeline and then drag and select this first keyframe. Um, that we insert it and go shift D and just drag it along to frame 80. And now if we have a look at this, it should be a loopable animation. Just like that. Cool, and now let's do the simple little animation of this empty, so select the empty. And with the empty selected, we're gonna come to frame one. And on frame one, we're gonna come here to the Z value and we're gonna type in nine zero and we're gonna hit enter. And hovering over it, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe and that's on frame one. Then we're gonna come to frame 20. And in frame 20, we're gonna make this value zero. So type in zero and hit enter. And hovering over this, hit I to insert a keyframe. And then we're gonna move up to frame 25 and with a value here of zero on the Z, we're gonna hit I again to insert a keyframe. And then we're gonna come over to frame 40. And on frame 40, we're gonna make this negative nine zero. We're gonna hit enter. And hovering over it, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe. So let's quickly have a look at that. Okay, so we should see this. Let's just quickly have a look. Comes over here, it swings, goes like this. And then we're gonna go to frame 60. And in frame 60, we're gonna come over here to the Z value if that empty still selected, and we're gonna make it a zero. And we're gonna hit I, turn to the keyframe. And then we're gonna move up to frame 65. And in frame 65, with a value of zero, we're gonna hit I again. And then we're gonna to come to frame 80. And on frame 80, we're gonna make the Z value 90 again. We're gonna hit enter. Hovering over it, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe. So let's quickly have a look at this animation. And this should be 100% loopable. Okay. And there we have it. That is our animation, guys. It was really that simple.